Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Stratego Assassin's Creed. This was sent to me by James Galt Co. at Limited, um, and is designed by... I'm not sure. <laughs> it doesn't say their name. Uh, but yeah. Let battle be joined between the most legendary assassins and their nemesis, the Templars, in this special Stratego Assassin's Creed edition. Secretly deploy your army. Who will have the strength and strategy to capture the Apple of Eden to safeguard peace and freedom for the citizens yeah, citizens of the world? Let me show you how to play. So this is essentially just Stratego with a few extra rules. So I will, since I never haven't reviewed Stratego on here, I'll go ahead and explain how to play. Um, you have 30 pieces each, and they are hidden from the other player. At the beginning of the game, you use this screen to, you know, hide what you're doing. And then you set up your pieces in any way you want in these three rows in front of you. The object of the game is to capture your opponent's Apple of Eden, which is this piece. Now, you have no idea which of them is that piece on the other side. So, you're going to attack units using your Assassins, or Templars, if you're the Templars. If you look, they all have different number values on them. And some of them even have special abilities. I have just realized I have set up the blue pieces on the red side. I don't care. I'm not going to <laughs> rearrange everything. Whatever. Now, the Apple of Eden and bomb pieces cannot move. These have to stay where they are. I'll go into what those do later. On your turn, you must move one of your pieces or attack with one of your pieces. You cannot move and attack except for scouts. We'll get into that later. So, you can pick a piece and... Boop, move them one uh, space, any direction except diagonally. Only one piece can occupy a square. You cannot jump over pieces. Uh, these are supposed to be, there's, it says mountains in the book. They're clearly fire. I don't know why they're called mountains, probably in the original game. Once you have moved a piece, you cannot break the two square rule. And what that means is you can't do three successive turns or I'm sorry, more than three successive turns where you go between the same squares. That's not allowed. Now, if an opponent's piece is in range, you can attack instead. So, uh, I, you declare and you say, I'm attacking with a, this is a six. And then your opponent uh, will declare their rank. In this case, it is a two. Your rank is higher, you win and capture the piece. You move into that square and their piece is off of the board. If your rank was lower, your piece would be captured and the opponent's piece would stay. If you have the same rank, uh, both pieces are captured and removed. Now, if the piece turns out to be a bomb, like this one, uh, your attacking piece loses and is captured and the bomb remains there. Only miners can defuse bombs. We'll get to that later. So, the way to win is if you capture your opponent's Apple of Eden, uh, or if a player cannot move or attack, uh, then the opposing player is the winner. Now, there are a couple specialists that do different things. Um, the number, the ranks go one through 10, and the spy here has one mission. Only they have the power to eliminate the marshal. If a spy captures a ten, uh, the other a player's ten rank, the marshal, the marshal is removed from the game. By contrast, if the marshal attacks the spy, uh, the spy is captured and removed. It can also be captured by any other piece because it is the lowest, but it can beat the ten. The scout, the two rank, can move across any number of spaces, forwards, backwards, or sideways, but only in a straight line. They can also attack in the same turn. So I can be like, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna attack this one. It's a two, okay, they're both out. The miner is three rank. These are the only guys that can disarm bomb. The miner attacks a bomb, the bomb is diffused, like so. And that's basic Stratego. You're just trying to find the opponent's Apple of Eden and capture it with one of your pieces. Now, the uh, what Assassin's Creed Stratego brings in are the pieces of Eden. So let's go through with each one. First up is the Shroud of Eden. If your spy is captured, they are wearing the uh, Shroud of Eden. So, if it gets captured, you have the ability to heal a wounded soldier. Immediately, choose any of your previously captured soldiers ranked from 2 to 10 and place it on a free square in the first row on your side. 
So I can be like, okay, let's pretend my um, my marshal died earlier. I can bring him back because it's a piece two to ten, and now he's back in action. Another weapon is the Sword of Eden. Uh, that is used by the captains or the six rake ones. The captain can attack two pieces at the same time. So if I have a captain here, I can choose to attack both of these. The opponent reveals the ranks. In this case, it's an eight and, oop, and a seven. Let's pretend it was a two instead. So you start with the lower ranking one. Captain kills the two, uh, but then it loses to the eight. So then the captain dies. If the captain managed to defeat both, they stay in their previous position. If they attack a bomb, they have to do bombs first and they immediately die. The final power is the Apple of Eden. Uh, what you can, you can only use this once. Uh, when using it, you turn it around to reveal its location. So let's say I'm using it. I use the Apple of Eden. Now your opponent knows where it is, but now I can take one of my opponent's pieces and attack in all four adjacent directions. So let's say I choose this one. Okay, it's an eight. So I'll attack them all in turn. So let's reveal. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. A three. And a nine. If one of the attack pieces is a bomb, piece is captured. After each successful attack, let's say it was not a bomb and they attacked them all, he always goes back, it's like the captain, it goes back to a previous position. If the Apple of Eden is there, it is not attacked. Uh, using the, it, uh, it will be returned to its opponent's control. Once you've done that, your turn ends, and the piece is returned to the opponent's control. If the opponent's piece you selected happens to be their Apple of Eden or a bomb, they only have to reveal that piece and not the surrounding ones. And then your turn just ends immediately. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. It's just classic Stratego with a few extra rules. You use your pieces to attack and try to find the Apple of Eden. And that's the game. So I will admit, I'm not like a diehard Assassin's Creed fan. Hi, Sophie. Uh, I played the first three up to Brotherhood, and it looks like this one is based off Ezio specifically, which is interesting. I thought we were those were done. I don't know. I don't really follow Assassin's Creed anymore. I also haven't reviewed Stratego on here before, so this is kind of like my review of both. So I haven't played Stratego in forever, and I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Uh, it's very simple, maybe a little too simple, but the most interesting aspects to me were some of the specialist abilities and having to remember what pieces were what. You know, if you take out the right pieces too early though, you can basically steamroll your opponent. And I feel like that's kind of an issue. I prefer games where it keeps the tension all the way to the end, but in this sometimes it just felt like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna win because you, you your pieces just happened to die. The dynamic of the miners being able to take out the bombs and the spy being able to kill the marshal, that makes the game semi-interesting and not tedious. The Assassin's Creed rules, they're okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, probably the most successful one uh, was the Shroud. Yeah, you think so, Sophie? Probably the best one was the Shroud because that kind of fixes one of my problems where, you know, if your opponent loses their best pieces, they're kind of just screwed. But with the spy, you know, there's a chance that they can bring them back and that injects some more, you know, tension back into the game. Hey, stop chewing that. Uh, the sword is okay. Uh, I appreciate it gives another piece some something to do. Because, again, again, I think the best part of the Stratego was that some of the pieces had special things. I kind of wish more of them did. Because a lot of them just feel like numbers and that's it. Like, nothing really special about them. Um, the apple feels like, to me, it kind of defeats the purpose of the game. Like, yeah, it's oh, it's decent as a last resort, but then your opponent knows where it is. Isn't that the whole point of Stratego? Uh, and it's not even that good of a power. It's my least favorite of the three. I, it, I just thought it wasn't a very good idea. Presentation-wise, I am not super impressed. Uh, the board looks like a blurry screenshot. The pieces are just Assassin's Creed stickers on regular pieces. I think some elevation of the components could have gone a long way to making this game pop. Like, if you're going to get you know, Assassin's Creed Stratego, 
what was that board? It, it was just like a blurry castle? It just... It, it, it doesn't look... Like, it could be anything else. That's how I feel about it. And I'm also not a really big Assassin's Creed fan, so... Especially for me, presentation was pretty lackluster. Uh, the actual game, Mr. Tigo, perfectly fine. Uh, very simplistic, but decent fun. I don't think the new rules of this or the presentation really elevate it that much, so I can only really recommend this version if you're like a die-hard Assassin's Creed fan. If you just love seeing the words Assassin's Creed on the cover, then maybe, but otherwise, I, I can't, I, I don't think it's particularly good version of Stratego.